it does not matter what colour you are, you need something what you must protect to keep you going and the barker in Western New South Wales is the best and the only thing we got. Without the barker we, we, we all finished, a lot of us. The fight to save the, the barker, the Darling River, is a global issue. It's happening all over the world. Rivers are the lifeblood of people, but also of, of countries, you know, they're, they're a source of life. That means I'm a Darlin River black person and without the Barker I'm nothing. I'll be 74 this year and when I was a kid we never lived in a mission, we just lived in a tin hut on the banks of the Barker and I, get, I say that I got three mothers, my mum, my grandmum would help rear me up and the Barker because it fed me. To the kids, what's growing the future today, they should claim it as their mother. We must protect it. And I say that whatever's in that barker, someone should take something and say, this is my totem, this is what I'm going to protect. Even if we say the river is my mother or my ngamuk in my language, that means my mother, we should say, this is mine, I'm going to protect it. Otherwise, we get no future out here. It became very obvious to me that the health of the river was so entwined not only with the nature that surrounded it, like the birds and the animals and the plants, but also of the people, both black and white, obviously the farmers as well along the river and all the communities. But in my case, because I spent so much time with the Bakanji people, like that was, so much a part of their identity and their lifestyle. As the river became healthy, I watched the community become healthy and happy and doing what they loved. And then as it sank, I watched the people's lifestyle would kind of disappear as well. And so would their spirits, you know, you would watch them become sad and um, heartbroken with the condition of the river dropping. What we're trying to show people is, uh, like with Justine with her portrait, she's showing that people around Wilcannia, they remember their childhood, they remember what the old people taught them, and they remember stories about the river. And then with what I try and do with my stuff, I focus on the birds and animals, you know, and I carve it in the line, I print and I tell the stories, what was told to me by my grandmother and what I experienced in my life when I was young. If I don't start putting stuff down of what I'd done and my childhood what was told to me, is it, it's going to be forgotten and my grandkids won't know, my great-grandkids won't know. If I just get up and start writing and start talking, then I'm just a black troublemaker, but if I put it in my artwork, then it puts it a point across different, and it puts it across more kinder. I really wanted something that everyone could mark in the exhibition, and I spoke with uh, Murray Butcher, who's in one of my films that I made and he, he was like Uncle Badger, he was brought up by his grandmother and he was very knowledgeable and I'd often go to him with questions and I said to him, I, I really want to incorporate something that the people can mark and he said to me, well, everyone knows of a handprint in the cave but my people were river people 
and they used to leave their footprints along the banks of the Barker and over time that's eroded but he said why don't you collect their footprints so of course it was then a no-brainer that why would we bring in clay when the river was so low and there was clay in the riverbed itself and then I went around to almost every house in Wolcania and um, I said we're, we're making an exhibition about the, about the river to fight for the river and we're going to collect your footprints. So we sat down and traced around each person's foot and the youngest I got was like three months and the oldest I got was a Bakenji woman, the oldest Bakenji woman was in her 90s. Okay, we do need money to keep Australia going, but why go stupid and kill the country? If we don't manage the country properly, we're going to have no future for the kids. I don't want to leave my grandkids this with nothing, what nothing will grow. You know, they've got to have something. To see this happening in real time, right in front of our eyes, and not do anything about it, it just, it's criminal to me. I can't, I can't look away and I want other people not to look away as well. <laughs>